So bacteria have different oxygen requirements. And in the lab, you might use a media called thioglycate. And it's used to determine the O2 requirement of the bacteria you're working with. And it's a semi-solid media, and this is what it looks like. So you might want to determine whether or not you have an aerobic organism, an anaerobic organism, a microaerophilic organism, or something that is facultative. So based on this test, you can determine, you know, what type of organism you have based on where the growth occurs. So if you have an aerobe, you're dealing with, you know, this small section of growth up here. And again, it makes perfect sense that at the near the top of the test tube, near the top of the culture after you inoculate it um, and let it grow, it, it's going to occur near the top because that's where the oxygen is going to be the highest. There's a good, there's a high oxygen concentration um, near the top and, and, you know, no oxygen down here. So it's only natural that this space here results in some growth. Uh, so aerobic organisms use O2 as the final electron acceptor. And it's a very strong electronic re electron receptor, but it also comes with a um, important disadvantage. And that disadvantage is it can um, create reactive oxygen species. And these reactive oxygen species can lead to the damage of proteins, specific en special enzymes, damage enzymes, damage um, DNA, etc. So they can cause some serious damage, and um, not all organisms are equipped to deal with uh, the damage caused by these reactive oxygen species. Only those that possess specific enzymes, such as catalase or peroxidase or superoxide dismutase, will be able to deal with um, these reactive oxygen species. So they're usually aerobic organisms that have these enzymes. And then on the opposite spectrum, the anaerobes, which, um, you know, can be damaged by these rea reactive oxygen species that use an, a, a final electron acceptor other than oxygen, usually something inorganic or sometimes organic, but um, they can be damaged by these reactive oxygen species because they don't contain the specific enzymes such as catalase, peroxidase, etc., that um, allow them to deal with these dangerous compounds. Uh, Microaerophiles can tolerate low levels of oxygen, okay, so they usually grow, you know, near the top, but not quite in the same zone. You can see here it's labeled for this zone right here for microaerophilic growth. Um, so they tolerate low levels of oxygen, but um, generally don't require high levels of it. And um, they do possess, and in this case, because they deal with oxygen, because they can use oxygen, um, they require, you know, the specific enzyme. So they actually have catalase, which inactivates some of these reactive oxygen species. And really, the take-home point here is that, you know, organisms that do not use oxygen, so namely anaerobic organisms in their metabolism, do not have the enzymes catalase, peroxidase, and superoxide dismutase to remove reactive oxygen species. So they're usually killed by them. So you won't see anything growing in, you know, in the upper area of the test tube if you have an, an anaerobic organism. So this is kind of like my simplified version of bacteria growth in terms of O2 requirements. And that is you're going to find in the high oxygen area where the aerobes are growing near the top of the thioglycate um, culture. And you're going to find the microaerophiles just below that. They can tolerate low levels of oxygen. And towards the bottom, of course, is where you're going to find the growth of the anaerobes because there's no oxygen down towards the bottom. And um, again, they would be killed in most cases if they didn't have it. And if you have any um, facultative anaerobes in here, they can grow under any of these conditions. Oxygen present, oxygen not present, uh, it doesn't really matter to them. So in keeping with the theme of anaerobic respiration, we actually have, you know, other electron acceptors. So in the case of anaerobic electron receptor, the electron receptors are something different, okay? The um, anaerobes use different electron acceptors. And in many cases, that's like I said before, in inorganic electron acceptors such as nitrate, nitrite, or sulfate. And in some cases, they can also be organic electron acceptors as well. So in the classic sense, you see oxygen here as the final electron acceptor. You'd see this replaced by something like nitrate or nitrite or an organic molecule for anaerobic um, organisms. 
the other thing I want to talk about in this video is counting bacteria. So in the lab it will often be necessary to have some way of counting the number of bacteria that you have. So how would you go about counting these bacteria? Well you can use several different methods and the first method I want to talk about is the direct count. So that counts cells directly, okay? It gives a very accurate number um, but there's a severe disadvantage, and that disadvantage is you can't tell if a cell is alive or dead. So you may be, count you may be counting bacteria that is both live, alive and dead, no longer, um, re no longer dividing. Um, so in which cases, maybe you don't want to do that. You may not want to do that. In some cases, it doesn't matter, but in other cases, it may matter. And it uses a specific strain, a stain to distinguish living cells from, from uh, dead cells. And you can actually do that, you know, with this fluorescent stain. So there is a way to do a direct count with a fluorescent stain that allows you to count only the living and cells if, if that's what you need to do. And in some cases it may be. Also, you may need to perform a viable count, okay? And viable count, just like it sounds, means that you're only going to count cells that are able to reproduce, okay? Only cells that are viable. And it requires time, of course, to form the colonies because you have to have some culture time, usually, you know, at least a day, probably more, um, and usually at specific incubation uh, temperatures. To obtain a viable count, dilutions of a liquid culture can be plated directly, okay, directly on an agar surface, and that's what I show right here, okay? So this might be your direct count, and this over here will be your viable count. What you do is you have these dilutions of, of your bacteria, and you plate it directly on agar plates. And what happens is as that dilution, as you dilute more and more, you end up with less and less colonies that are going to be produced on the um, on the agar, on the solid medium, which means it's going to be easier to count. So once you perform the serial dilution and you get a smaller number of plated colonies, okay, you can then count the colonies on the plate. And you usually want to make sure that you're counting only those that have at least 30 colonies, okay, in order to do this. Now, probably the more one of the best ways and um, one of the most useful ways I, I feel and one of the ways I use in the lab quite often is um, basically using a spectrophotometer and that's this turbidity okay so you're gonna use a spectrophotometer to measure the optical density and the benefit of this is it really does give a very rapid um, a, a very rapid reading you'll know right away what you're dealing with and there's specific wavelengths and such that you have to set the spectrophotometer at but once you know those wavelengths and you have your samples and you have, of course, a, um, a sample of just the medium alone because you want to zero, that you want to be able to zero the meter so that the meter's not picking up things in the medium itself, um, you're able then to get a really, really accurate, really, really rapid count of how many colonies you have. And that's going to be important in a lot of cases because you're going to want to know if you're spinning your cells down, you want to, you want to, um, you know, know how many you got. How many you have? How many you're dealing with? What are you starting with? Do you have enough to do what you need to do? So this is a really, really useful way of, um, of um, you know, getting obtaining a count. But it also has the disadvantage again that you're counting both living and dead cells. Okay, the, the spectrophotometer is not going to distinguish between the two.